Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Dr. Asad Dean, member of the Executive Committee at the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. Asad has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Asad, for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here. So what prompted you? You're, you're an oncologist. Yes. What prompted you to join the Executive Committee of this Modern Art Museum? Well, a dear friend of mine uh, over 12 years ago was on the Director's Council of the museum, and we were just starting our careers, and he said, I'd really like you to be a part of this organization. It's an opportunity to support the museum, but also have a role in acquisition. And I find that very important to be able to have influence in what a museum uh, may collect uh, and in building their collection. So I decided to join and I fell in love with it. It was an opportunity to not only support a treasure in our community, but also connect with other art lovers and being able to promote the museum has been uh, a tremendous uh, gratification for me. You are a collector, you have an interest in art, but, but how does your sensibility as a doctor mm -hmm. express itself in terms of interacting with other collectors, mm -hmm. other board members, curators, in a way that shifts the, the organization in productive directions? Mm -hmm. For me, the influence came in not only understanding how a museum goes about acquiring um, particular works, in the process, but also in the understanding of the artists behind the acquisitions. The Director's Council at the Modern Art Museum, which I've had the privilege of chairing, enables the members of the council to uh, not only attend the openings of three to four artists per year, and they may be uh, mid-career artists, um, they may be emerging artists, but at the end of the year, there will be a work from each artist. And we as the members will vote. The artist's work that garners the most votes, the museum will acquire that work for the permanent collection. So that's very exciting to be able to have a hand in the selection process and to influence what the museum is collecting. Because when you are not a curator or a director, then it gives you an opportunity to really feel a part of the museum. And but, that's what I love. And you're also representing the audience. You're representing the people who are experiencing the art. You're also representing the community. This, this whole idea of constituent involvement in a museum, which, which starts to take away the barrier of expertise mm -hmm. that come, sometimes sits between a work and the person experiences it. It's a very interesting dynamic that you're engaged in? Art is extremely personal, and it's everyone's experience. I do think having people come into the museum uh, and to look at a work and be mesmerized or think, my goodness, how did they do that? Or, you know, I could have done that. <laughs> you know, those particular moments are what brings people together. And I've always felt and firmly believe that art does bring people together. But I think at the end of the day, what ends up being most important is that people come away with a sense of positivity from what they have experienced within the artistic encounter. As part of the board, one of your objectives for the institution is to raise funds yes. and to also help to connect the public to the organization. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how you have done that and how you have combined uh, fundraising with service to the community. Uh, in terms of assisting with endowment, what I have done is going to friends, going to individuals in the community, um, emphasizing the importance and what the museum has done in terms of education what our collection is about and to to support it. So you're, a, you're an active evangelist. You also go out and you ask your friends for money. It's critical for us to continue to financially support these institutions that uh, do benefit us and again, you know, heal us. And art is 
art is an opportunity that if you don't experience it in a lifetime, I don't think you've lived. <laughs> And, and you also are involved in uh, ArtStation. Talk about ArtStation. Well, that is a, a recent nonprofit uh, that I have become involved with, and it employs art therapists to help individuals that uh, have either suffered a severe medical illness or a particular trauma in their life, and how art can be an outlet of healing for them. Do you feel that the health benefits of art making, the power in the process of, of taking ideas, taking feelings, taking emotions, transmitting them into another form that is accessible to others, does that create a response in the body that is helpful to alleviation of pain and suffering, or does it have other kind of physical effects? In my experience and in the review of, in, of the literature, it does. Because when I was creating my artwork, um, I, felt, I felt very happy. Uh, I'm a happy person to begin with. But I felt, uh, I felt an emotional connection to what I was creating and the opportunity to use my mind to create it was tremendously uplifting. And when I have seen individuals who have faced severe illness and what they have been able to create, it's tremendously cathartic. It is a purging of dis-ease and bringing them towards ease. You see in your patients who pursue this a joy. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is affecting how you treat people with cancer. You know, I'll tell you, I see patients who I've taken care of who are at the museum openings. And it gives me a great deal of pride to see them. And I tell them that when you see me in public, you know, I'm not your physician, I'm your friend. Uh, and I'm so proud of them being able to partake of life and that they are well enough to do so. And uh, I've had individuals who have have been quite ill, yet they try to manage, you know, to make it, and how much art is important to them. So my, my perspective is, is unique uh, compared to individuals who, who do curate and direct, and I have such a deep appreciation and admiration for them. For me, it is how can I propel what I enjoy forward so that others can reap the health benefits which they may not see? And that's oftentimes how perspectives will change because I firmly believe there is a health benefit. You look around and you see what it does and these artists, these individuals who are around the globe and what they're doing. Today I also saw the artist's work, Carlos Cruz Diaz, he's 93, creating spectacular works. So longevity is another aspect too. Do people live longer if they have art in their life? So I find this so fascinating that you, in many respects, are the intermediary, you're the interpreter of the expertise of the curator, of the expertise of the artist, and encouraging that work, that thinking to be used in a different context, in the treatment of, of your patients, in a way that, that now creates a treatment regimen that consists of drugs, examination, diagnosis, uh, physical therapy, and also art making, art creation, art study. Dr. Asad Dean, thank you so much for sharing your experience as an oncologist and as a member of the Executive Committee of the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. And thank you so much for your insights. It was a pleasure to be with you, Mark. Thank you.